Is America facing a Mad Max future? You say, well, what are you talking about? Well, there's a Hollywood movies that came out years ago, Mad Max, and um, there was a bunch of different ones. It was Mel Gibson earlier on in, in uh, his career. And I remember seeing those movies when I was a boy. And back then in the 1980s, um, as I was growing up, they would take Hollywood movies and they would censor out all the profanity. And uh, it's pretty nice back then. Now you have, uh, things are so messed up, you have Christians defending the use of profanity. Professing Christians, of course. Um, profanity and, and swearing and things is something that a Christian doesn't do. But uh, that was well known in the past, but now people have forgotten that. And, you know, um, you're never going to deceive me on that. And, oh no, Brother Brian, you don't understand it. Oh, I understand very well. Okay, I'm old enough to remember the time when uh, profanity was looked down upon. But they had these movies. They'd play them in Saturday mornings or whatever else. They'd have the movie time and I'd watch these Hollywood movies and things. It wasn't good. I'm not defending it. Not encouraging anybody to watch them. But I remember the Mad Max uh, movies. And, you know, they had the first one, I think, where he was... There was still some law and order, you know. And he was a policeman and had this cool car, you know, with it was supercharged and blown. Had a big blower sticking out and everything with a hood and... And he'd go after this motorcycle gang and, and whatever. And and uh, then by the time he hit the second movie, then he still has his cool car, but there's not much gas left, you know, and people are starting to patch vehicles together. We'll get back to that here in a little bit. And then by the time you have the third one, the Beyond Thunderdome or something, I think it was called, then it's they're starting to have congregate into these, you know, cities and they're, they were using, uh, raising pigs to get the methane for fuel people are having to come up with their own ideas like that and of course people in hollywood you know they're part of the globalist system and so the globalists have different plans for the future people in hollywood will try to kind of get people mentally prepared for that that's the whole point hollywood is a propaganda machine hollywood is not some kind of just artistic creative place where people come up with interesting ideas no they're they're shaping society and just as i said uh, television networks at one point in time were censoring profanity and now they don't. Why? Because they're shaping society like that. Back again when I was a boy you didn't hear profanity when you, when you went out in public. Uh, if you did, you know, somebody would say, oh excuse my French, you know, that was the statement. And um, now people use the F word out in public. Uh, people have become rather vile and filthy and uh, very low IQ as well, by the way, I might add. And, but getting back to the point here, um, I'm noticing it. Uh, as I'm up here in northern Maine, and I've seen it in other people's videos, you know, they'll be near the road or whatever, and you see these vehicles going by, and um, you can just see people are just trying to eke out every little last bit of... Um, use of a vehicle that should be just scrapped uh you know a lot of people are so badly in debt and we've had all this vehicle repossession stuff you know where i think for a while there was like something like fifteen thousand vehicles being repossessed a day here in america um because people couldn't afford their payments anymore but i'm seeing these vehicles are going by and you can hear you know you know going by or you hear ting 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 you know, and there's channels on YouTube. I think one is just rolled in, um, is what the channel name is. And it's about, you know, mechanics video, you know, taking video of people's cars that come in to be repaired. And some of the stuff that these people are driving, you just think, how, you know, it's not even safe. It's terrible. Um, I mean, just mind blowing. I know in the, in the idiocy of the way that they try to repair these cars, I saw one guy tried to repair the, uh, replace the head gasket underneath his valve cover with bread, white bread. I mean, I realize that, that stuff's pretty toxic, but uh, I mean, not to seal the, the valve covers on the head of your vehicle, you know, and, and the spray foam, they had a whole edition, you know, spray foam edition. Um, we'll watch these videos sometimes, Oliver and I, you know, when he has his lunch break at the office. And, um, we just crack up, you know, just laughing what these people do. And, you know, uh, one guy, his tire, he couldn't stop the leak. And he 
screwed a piece of aluminum to the outside of the tire over where the there was a gash in the sidewall I'll just screw a piece of aluminum on there you know that, that should keep the air in <laughs> stuff like that that's just crazy see how's that relate to the road warrior thing this uh, Mad Max type of thing well because you could see in that movie that they were patching vehicles together society falls apart and now people can no longer afford the overpriced vehicles of the auto manufacturers and I'm seeing it it's getting kind of weird and uh, not to mention the fact that I believe that they've used up a lot of the um, petroleum out there. So gas is going to become ridiculously expensive. What will happen when that occurs? Hmm. Uh, early on, you know, I think a lot of people will start to just do what they do in third world countries, where I've been different times, and they have uh, motorcycles because motorcycles... Uh, you can get pretty good mileage, fuel mileage. Uh, get a bigger dual sport, like a 600 or 650 range. They'll get about 45 miles per gallon, somewhere in there. Um, if you ride them responsibly, you get down into the 200cc range, like a Yamaha TW200, and you're looking at about 80 miles per gallon. I used to have one of those. It's fun to ride around the back roads and everything. Um, top speed of about 55 miles an hour, so you're not really going to be going out in the interstate with it. But, um, you know, and then you get into these some of these newer mini motos that they call them, like the, there's a Honda Monkey and a Honda Grom and some of these others. They're about 125 cc. You get down into there and you're looking at, you know, some people, if you ride really conservative, you're looking at 150 miles per gallon. It's pretty good. But uh, people are running out of money, and people are patching their vehicles together. And uh, the future will be smart cities with electric vehicles. Um, I do believe that that is the future, the mark of the beast system that God abhors and God hates. They say, well, then God's for gas vehicles. No, I didn't say that, okay? Um, certainly gas vehicles have been used um, to do good things for the Lord, um, certainly. You know, delivering Bibles, delivering tracts. I mean, there's been a lot of good points to people having gas vehicles. And I'm, I love, I love uh, you know, older vehicles and things like that. But again, there's another point to that. And that is um, the auto parts industry is collapsing. And there's guys that have reported on that on YouTube. Just, you know, mechanics and things. Guys have been mechanics all their lives and they're coming out and they're saying... These junk things, parts that we're getting from China, you know, you're getting brake rotors that fall apart. And, uh, you know, I mean, just all kinds of things. You know, our um, we have a 2001 Jeep Cherokee, an XJ, and I did a lot of research before I bought that. I always wanted an XJ, I always liked them. But I, you know, back in 2020, I decided, you know, we need a good family vehicle because our Chevy Tracker that I walked past back there if you saw the white tracker back there, it was no longer inspectable. You know, thank you, Northern Maine, for all the poisonous salt and everything you put on the roads, which destroys our vehicles, but uh, that's another issue. And so it was no longer inspectable. I needed to get something, a uh, family vehicle for the winter, so I did a lot of research. Um, I personally prefer old Wagoneers, Jeep Wagoneers from the 1970s and 80s. I've had a couple of those over the years. Great vehicles, but they're a little bit uh, you know, gas hogs because they have a 360 V8 in them. Um, most of them, I think some had 304s, some had 401s even. But uh, this video is more for gearheads. So uh, if you're kind of looking for deep Bible doctrine here, well, there will be some here in a little bit. But um, just hang on. But uh, there's a point to this video. Um, but we got the, the Cherokee. And it was really good. It was an excellent, very reliable vehicle. Had a little bit of a, you know, the steering wheel shakes a little bit, around 55 miles an hour. Um, but that was, you know, I was told it was because of the lift kit on it. You know, it's very difficult sometimes to get them dialed in just perfectly where the they don't shake or whatever. And I put new tires on the, on the Jeep and that took care of the problem for a while. Now it's back to shaking again. But, you know, it's a Jeep. Whatever, I don't care doesn't have to ride down the road like a Cadillac or anything. Um, but 
Then we had a fuel pump issue. Fuel pump died. And because I was running it, you know, below a quarter tank of gas. And so I guess the fuel pump heated up or something, or, you know, at first it was, you know, the fuel pump went bad. They replaced it, the original one, because the tank was filled with a whole bunch of dirt and gunk and whatever from being off-road quite a bit. Took it to the mechanic. He said, yeah, he said the tank was just filled with dirt and everything. He said they took it down, they cleaned out the tank, and then they um, put a new fuel pump in. But it was no longer the factory fuel pump now. Now it's a fuel pump that's made in China. And um, about a year later, it broke again. And then another year later, it broke again. And finally, you know, uh, one of the brethren that is a regular viewer of the videos here, a former mechanic, and he said, you need to keep gas in the tank because the gas is what keeps the pump cool. Well, okay, I can see that you would want to put it in the tank to keep it clean. You know, I get that, but having to have, you know, a mechanical electric pump inside of a gas tank and the gas is there to keep it cool, it just seems kind of odd to me. But um, I have to question um, whether it's, you know, really, is it just the way it's designed or is it the Chinese replacement part? And I've seen and heard a lot of stories of people having their, these replacement parts coming from China, and they're terrible. They're absolutely terrible. So, you know, I'm looking to get another vehicle in the future at some point in time. We're going to have to have something a little bit different than the XJ, because it's starting to get a little bit of rust on it now, which means it's on its way down. Uh, still has fairly low miles, but... The point is, now you get into this thing, and I know a lot of other people are going through this. Do you get a newer vehicle and just kind of have it as it's disposable? Or do you try to get an older vehicle that's more reliable, that's easier to work on, but then the replacement parts are made in China? You know, what do you do? Um, it's kind of a weird situation. And that's why I said, is America's future kind of a Mad Max type of a thing where you have all of these different uh, vehicles that are being driven in the movies, um, they're just patched together from a bunch of different things. And, you know, seeing the, like I said, that channel just rolled in, people are already patching together things. So, here comes my dog. Here he comes. Come on, boy. Coming to see me. He always has to check on me, make sure I'm all right. Good boy. Hey, buddy. All right, let's get back this way. So let me know your thoughts. I'd like to hear what you had to say, but there was another thing that's more disturbing about those movies, which is uh, part of Bible prophecy. You see, they weren't just driving around junk vehicles helping each other. They were driving around junk vehicles trying to take gas and and resources from the people that were left in the land. And the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, reading down through a couple verses, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. Let me switch the page here. Disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Um, that's the real concern. See, it's one thing to have people that have uh, not much money and they try to patch vehicles together. Uh, that's one thing. Um, it's another thing entirely to have those same people now trying to steal from other people. Um, another reason why the Chevy tractor that we have got parked is because some people came here and they cut the catalytic converter off of it. Here in the middle of nowhere, northern Maine. Called the police and, and the police said, uh, email us pictures. No investigation. No, hey, we'll come out and see if we can find some evidence. Or 
no, uh, that time is gone. Uh, we'll just, you know, email us some pictures and, and we'll see what we can do. Well, thankfully, the ring of catalytic converter thieves, they were caught. And so that's been stopped. But uh, what's it going to be like in the future? Are people just going to start going and stealing parts and things and whatever, you know, taking what they need off of vehicles here in America as things collapse? I don't know. Again, I'd like to hear your stories. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Do you have bad experience with uh, made in China parts? And of course, you know, uh, the Chinese, quite frankly, they don't know how to make car parts. Uh, cars weren't invented in China. And not to mention the fact that uh, it's a communist country. You're not going to do your best job on car parts and manufacturing plants when you're there basically making, making almost no money and whatever. See. The cyclical nature of economies and empires and whatever else, um, America is heading down. Uh, very sad to say, but it is. You know, and I, again, I realize that people say, well, brother, you're being worldly and you're whatever. No, I'm actually being thankful for what I have lived through, the good times that I once knew. I want to be thankful for that. I understand that this world is passing away. I understand that Bible prophecy is being fulfilled. And I look forward to the Lord's uh, catching up of his bride, which is going to happen. And I've got over 160 studies to prove it. Uh, I've gone through all the doctrines, all the attacks, back and forth, pre-trib rapture, post-trib, mid-trib, pre-wrath, all this. I've, I know it all, okay? I really do. Um, if you don't want to take the time to, to go through the studies that I've done, well, that's your problem. It's not mine. But um, I'd like to hear people's stories. Have you had... Bad experiences with Chinese made parts. What are your thoughts about the future of the vehicle industry? Uh, the electric vehicle thing right now, people are against them. That's good because electric vehicles equal tyranny. Um, terrible, absolutely terrible. Uh, and I'm glad that people are standing against it. So over there's the tracker right there. Now, uh, it's probably a nice home for mice. Uh, and again, it was having problems with the transmission and the motor was getting a little bit weird and everything else. So, um, I'll probably scrap it eventually, but we'll see. Um, but uh, yeah, I'd like to know your thoughts about it. And again, uh, why, do I, why did I do this video? Why did I talk about this? Well, very simple, because I want to encourage people to believe in the Word of God. The Bible said that these things would happen, and they're happening. So then you can say, hmm... If a book that's this translation, King James Bible, was written in 1611, and it's saying what's happening right now, and what's about to happen, it's just going to get more like this, uh, what the Bible's saying there in 2 Timothy chapter 3, then um, maybe it is God's Word. You see, in order for a book to be considered supernatural, it would have to be able to foretell the future, because then it could be written by a God that's outside of time inspired by God and uh, that's the truth of the King James Bible I uh, say so I don't believe that okay hang on to your unbelief hang on with uh, uh, for dear life because it's going to be fulfilled you're going to see it being fulfilled as time goes by and um, it's going to be a shock for you so like I said let me know your thoughts let me know your stories I like to hear stories about automotive type of things um, are we even going to be able to get parts in the future? Are we just going to be, you know, buying old vehicles and hopefully the fuel pump's okay there? Or, yeah, and again, I just have to say this. Um, when I was a young man, they had junkyards, you know. I had an accident with my one car. I had a Plymouth Champ and uh, messed up the front quarter panel. And we went to a junkyard and we looked around for another Plymouth Champ, took the front quarter panel off of that and... Went home, unbolted mine, bolted the new one on, and it was a different collar than the one that I had. But I didn't care. Whatever. It was just a beater car. You know, paid a couple hundred dollars for it. Uh, so, but uh, let me know what you think. Are we heading for a Mad Max future? That'll be it. Thank you for watching.